So there was this rug in my dad's office that was kind of clashing with all the other decor. And so without telling him, I decided it was time to cut it up and turn it into something. I really wanted a showstopper piece, and so I decided to turn it into a trench coat because I didn't want to cut into any more of the leather than I absolutely had to. And by keeping it in one big piece, it was really gonna show off that gorgeous cowhide. So I got to work making the pattern. I'm doing the first fitting, and there's a few things wrong with this. And it sucks, because it took me forever to draft this, but you see how weird this shoulder is, this sleeve? Okay, so I think I figured it out. See how it's like spreading right here? I need to add more to the sleeve, and then that way it's in the middle and it's balanced. I'm kind of liking the way it's looking so far. It's got kind of chore coat. Okay, good news. I think I fixed the problem. I added a half inch onto the back of the collar and I kind of widened this area on the raglan sleeve part too. So I made quite a few changes. I'm gonna do my full mock-up tomorrow. So I decided to make my mock-up from some stuff that I got at an army surplus store and I knew I was gonna need to find something with relatively the same thickness and weight. One of the challenges I was going to face was obviously facing my father's wrath, but mostly just making a pattern that was going to fit on the cowhide. So I knew that ultimately I would probably need to make a few adjustments to the pattern, but that was okay as long as I was getting a really boxy silhouette. The material I used for my mock-up was actually a liner for a poncho mixed with this canvas duffel bag. I wanted to incorporate the closure that the duffel bag originally came with, so I got these clips and spray painted them black, and then to finish off those fraying edges, I just used a lighter. This was moderately successful, and I wasn't super thrilled with the outcome, but it was just a mock-up, and I was only really making this to get the right fit. Reusing materials can be really rewarding because it forces you to be creative and do things you wouldn't normally do, but other times it can just be really time consuming. Okay, I was finally ready to cut into this cowhide and I cannot express to you how sweaty my hands were. <laughs> I was so scared to cut into it because I knew that once I started, there was no turning back. So I have to admit that I broke some pretty big rules when it comes to working with leather. Now, I know with leather that you're supposed to keep a consistent grain, but I was pretty much forced to place them in different directions because I was so limited on how much space I had. And this made my hands even more sweaty. Pro tip, if your hands are sweaty or if your pins keep breaking because your fabric is thick with a capital C, then use some binder clips. Fun fact, my sewing machine actually exploded because this leather was so thick. And so while I was waiting for my industrial sewing machine to come, I actually was forced to glue things. But with leather, it's actually allowed. In fact, if you are gonna work with leather, gluing is highly recommended because it holds things in place better than binder clips. And then you're gonna have to hammer down all those seams because you can't iron leather. And the only way to get them to lie even semi-flat is to hammer them. I wish I could have used that cowhide as the facing for my jacket, but I actually ran out, so I decided to just stick with a faux black leather instead. And now I was ready to start cutting out my lining and I decided to use just a black taffeta. I was truly giddy. I was starting to see the jacket come together and I was like, wow, I think this is the coolest thing I've ever made. One of the most strangely satisfying things during this whole entire project, in fact, probably in my entire life, was pulling out those little hairs from underneath the stitches. I had so much fun that I decided to do it around my entire jacket, which was so extra, but it did actually end up making the jacket look a lot nicer. Next, for the button, instead of using regular thread, I decided to use this wax braided stuff because it was going to be a lot stronger, which meant I didn't have to poke as many holes. For this step, I had to use pliers because that needle was very hard to poke through the leather. The next step was getting those lapels to lie flat. I tried everything from weights, to books, to hammering, to more binder clips, but ultimately, I ended up having to sew a small part of the lapel to the collar. After that, I just sewed on my tag, and then there was one final step. Edge coat for my coat. All you need is gloves, a crappy paintbrush, and then something to protect the surface that you're painting on. This part was really fun. This was honestly my first time, I think, working with real leather, and I really enjoyed it. I honestly thought I was gonna need a walking foot, but my new machine, the Juki DDL 5500, hardly had any issues. I think my needle only broke twice. After letting it dry, I think it was finally time to show the jacket to my dad. Hey, uh, dad, come here, I wanna show you something. What's up? Come see if you notice anything different about your office. Uh, well, my carpet is not on the floor. You turned my <laughs> made a coat out of my carpet. Are you gonna put it on? Check out my cow hide coat. 